we're here new episode of fan casting we decided to go big with the original six avengers now we're taking this casting as it is placed in the avengers movie so take that accordingly and we're going to get right to it now we're going to start with hawkeye um one of the most legendary and most important characters of the original six let's say yes so Um, so important they 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 decide to not have give him a solo movie until solo thing until phase four exactly exactly save the best for last that's what they Mm do but we decided to save the best for first and Nick, would you like to tell us who your casting was for Hawkeye? Yes. Yeah, so I'll just come out and say it. I put in, uh, you saw him in Rocket Man. You saw him in 1917. I put Richard Madden as Hawkeye. Um, I was, yeah, I was drawn from those two roles along with his role in the Netflix series Bodyguard. I think um, he can just play this like, like very like efficient, uh, what is the term? I suppose like man of action, like not necessarily like, like a Jason Statham type role, but he has like the, the humanity, he has the compassion while still being able to effectively carry himself through a fight scene. Um, I know from Bodyguard that he can be a very, like he won the Golden Globe for best uh, drama lead. Uh, I know he can be a very uh, down to earth and a very just um, human human persona. And that's, I recall the scene from Age of Ultron when his when Hawkeye's wife is telling him like, you're probably the most important member of the team as you are the like most normal relatively of the team. And I think Richard Madden can bring the physicality. Richard Madden can bring the action finesse, but he can also bring that down to earth quality that uh, is so important about Clint Barton, what makes him stand out. So that's an interesting pick. I actually, I, I don't mind it. I'll say that. Uh, one but, of your backups. <laughs> uh, he was one of my backups. He wasn't, he wasn't my star. He wasn't the star, and that's for a reason. My star is Ryan Gosling as Hawkeye. Now, you may not have thought of this at first, but here's my reasoning behind it. He can play that dry humor really well. I think he will have a really great uh, relationship with my Black Widow that I think will really, really help. Uh, I already know your Black Widow. (laughs) And I, I, I really like how he can play the physicality of the role. He has the dry humor. Uh, he has all that it takes. And now you laid out uh, Richard Madden, and he's great, right? Mm-hmm. But we haven't seen him as anything other than a straight man. You know what I mean? He always plays the action guy. Or, to be fair, in Rocket, you saw Rocket Man, right? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's kind of a dick there. <laughs> well, he, he is, but you don't see the more humorous side to him as a character. And I don't think he has that proven. He may have that. You may see that in the Eternals. But I'm not sure about that. I know Ryan Gosling has that. I know he has the physicality too. And f- f- because of that, I'm going to go with Ryan Gosling as my Hawkeye. Interesting choice. Interesting choice. I, I'll come back to you on this. I, I, I need to process how I feel about this. Because I'll admit, I was not expecting Ryan Gosling. I will get back yeah. to how I feel. And now I know who your Black Widow is, just from how you said. All right. Well, you're going to go first with Black Widow. <laughs> We're going to keep everyone else guessing. So All right. who did so, you pick? I picked Oscar winner Alicia Vikander of Man From U.N.C.L.E., Tomb Raider, Danish Girl fame. Um, from Tomb Raider, we know she can be an action star. From The Danish Girl, we know she can portray a um, just an emotionally like like uh, intense and just like emotionally broad character. And I think from even though we saw it in The Man From U.N.C.L.E., she can have that like sass, that sarcastic like wit like she was able she was playing off uh, army hammer henry cavill and in a way that was the same similar ways so, uh, like scarlett johansson's um dialogue with the rest of the avengers plays off she's often like he like she's often teasing them she's often like like the sh- like straight person in the room um and she's like the most able person in the room and i think alicia vikander can balance all the complicated aspects of black widow and handle herself like effectively like again like i point to her uh, performance in the danish girl she can she can hit all levels of the emotional spectrum we know from tomb raider that she can like convincingly portray an action star and like she is a total badass and she can totally carry herself like as an actress and i think honestly there's no better person to play to succeed scarlett johansson as black widow than alicia vikander um 
she she can bring it she can bring it all and i think she definitely has the talent both physical and emotional to to carry that role it's an interesting pick i i like her as an actress i don't know if she's quite right for this role um and i'm not going to go with who you're thinking i was going to go with uh and i wasn't saying you at least confirmed that i that was you could that like that was one of them i considered her as a backup i considered emma stone as a backup um but it's not who I went with. I went with Jennifer Lawrence. Now, <laughs> here's my reasoning behind it. Now you may say, oh, the X-Men movies, but no, 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 you're not approaching this the right way. Have you seen Silver Linings Playbook? I have actually. Great she movie. Oscar for that, it was. Exactly. American Hustle, great movie. Winter's Bone, great movie. Um, Wait, multiple nominations. Winter's Bone, it was the okay. first one she was nominated for. Okay. Uh, She's fantastic in all those movies. And I think the thing with uh, Black Widow as a character is a lot of her emotions go unspoken um, and kind of the difficulty that she's deal with and kind of the life that goes behind everything. And I think Jennifer Lawrence is really good at that and she can portray that very well. Now, she also has Red Sparrow where she played a Russian, uh, spy. <laughs> Russian spy. So you, you know that she has that capability of being able to do that. She's done that before. She's a com- proven commodity in that sense. Uh, she can do the action, which is important. Uh, so I think she has everything that it takes to be a great Black Widow. Uh, I think her and Ryan Gosling would have really good interact- interactions. I think Jennifer have Lawrence been, is generally really good. Um, no, they have not. But that doesn't change the fact that I think they would work really well together. I think Jennifer Lawrence is one of those people who um, brings pe- other people in a film up a level. Because I think she's really good for chemistry, just the way she... Uh, acts and scenes in the energy she brings and I think that would be really great for the Black Widow character. Interesting I have to think I have to ponder this too because I was I'll admit I was not expect I was not expecting Jennifer Lawrence I'll have to I, I'll come back to you on this on my thoughts on this as well but moving all right. on moving on. all right yeah moving on we have the Hulk uh, so we got the big green man uh, we've got the man who knows how to smash mm-hmm. so so who was your choice? Well, I was looking at like a lot of actors. I was looking at a lot of like of the comic book images of Thor, and I, I remember um, I don't even know how I found him, but I was clicking through pictures and I saw this guy, and I was like, "This is actually perfect." I threw in you saw him in uh, Looper, you saw him in The Dark Knight Rises. You'll be seeing him in The Trial of the Chicago Seven. I put Joseph Gordon Levitt as the Hulk. I think I. <laughs> No way, did you? <laughs> no way, we'll get to yours. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> um, I put Joseph Gordon Levitt just because, one, I think he's hugely underrated. I think he's um, a very capable actor who's just, just who, who deserves to be, like, show up in more stuff. And, like, you know, I point to, like, partic- I, uh, my favorite Mark Ruffalo performance as Hulk is the first Avengers movie. And in that movie, you see a sort of, like, uh, like constant like anxieties constantly like antsy like, even though he's like doing his best to stay calm he's very like agitated while still retaining that like inherent genius he has and I think Joseph Gordon-Levitt can perfectly balance that sort of can perfectly balance the scientist quality can perfectly balance the kind of like a man who's not comfortable in his own skin is like just constantly again like agitated and kind of anxious and um he, well, also, like, if you look at his stuff in, um, if you look at Mark, like, the writing, how Hulk was treated in Age of Ultron, he, I think Joseph Gordon-Levitt can also portray that sort of haunted, almost, like, melancholy um, aspect of the character, which was um, um, one of the main parts of his story in um, the Avengers sequel. And um, I don't know, I just think he's, like, I think he's just perfectly capable to portray all the aspects of Bruce Banner that is needed. He can nail the melancholy, can nail the anxiety, can also nail the scientist part of it. And um, if you've seen stuff like uh, Don John, when Don John, yeah, I believe that's it. He was, it was a film he directed, his directorial debut. He can also um, show off his more um, comedic, more like quick witted side, which is also an aspect of Ruffalo's Hulk that was like kind of brought out, especially in like Infinity War and Ragnarok. And ultimately, I just think he's uh, a great pick for Hulk. He, he's won an Emmy, like two Emmys, I believe, and just an all around like 
perfect actor to take on this role and to like exceed everything that the the storylines that they were giving um ruffalo so this is a very good choice but it's it's not the best it's it's close Wait, but it's did not you react because thing. you had him as a backup too uh yes uh, <laughs> but he was not my star and that's for a reason it's mm. because matt damon is my star matt, matt damon, damon just the man from martian jason bourne <laughs> jason bourne he's in 4v ferrari the scientist part, he, he knows how to play that. Right. He knows 100% how to play that. And he can play angry. If you've seen Ford v. Ferrari, he can get angry in, in different ways. And Jason Bourne, there's an anger, but they're all different ways of uh, portraying it. Mm-hmm. And there's also the caring side of him. He's uh, inherently, um, Bruce Banner is a very kind person who has this alter ego who's completely different. Mm-hmm. And Interesting. If you've that's seen, that's if you've it. seen the film Contagion, you can see that um, we haven't even brought up Goodwill Hunting. And it, I was gonna like, say, I was like, once you said the scientist part, I was like, that's um, yeah, but yeah. I keep going. My bad. Yeah, yeah. But Goodwill Hunting, you have the scientist part. You have the really human aspect to him, uh, mm-hmm. in just wanting to be the best person he can be. But I think all of that can be combined into the character of Bruce Banner, and then I think he can also portray because we what you didn't talk about is portraying the rage and actually playing the hulk and i think one of the best things about matt damon is his physicality as an actor so i think doing motion capture work for trying to create the best hulk possible i think he can really uh hone in on that physicality and from there i mean there's nothing he can't do i can see him getting angry you know and just screaming and doing all the Hulk stuff that you need him to do perfectly. Interesting. Interesting. So that's pick. my pick. That's my interesting pick. pick. Interesting pick. So not interesting pick. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a pretty great pick. And, and yours was solid, but yet again, mine was better. It's mm-hmm. just how it goes. Mm-hmm. Uh, moving on, we're going to go for Thor, uh, right. the God of Thunder. Um, but did you hit lightning in a bottle with your pick? Who did you go with? Well, I know this guy is a more than capable actor. If, I'll admit, did I capture Lightning in a Bottle? I can't be on. I'm honestly not sure. But I thought for the role of the powerful God of Thunder, who can, who is like ripping apart Thanos' armies in Infinity War, like no problem. I threw up um, Alexander Skarsgård. He won an Emmy in HBO's Big Little Lies. He'll be showing up in Robert Eggers' next film, The Northmen. Um, what I'm blanking now. Uh, he's um. What you mean? If you've seen Eight Little Big Lies, he can handle all the like intense kind of like emotional, but also charismatic parts, which is a lot of based in Thor's character. You point to the scene, his scene with Rocket in Infinity War. Point to um the scenes where he's kind of like this like like joyful, joy um like warrior type figure, and he is, he was also in. Uh, David Yates' Tarzan film, The Legend of Tarzan, which starred uh, Margot Robbie and Christoph Waltz. He has the physicality. He is more than, he has the physicality to match his talent. Um, now, of course, the, the big question is, can he hit Chris Hemsworth's um, level of comedy? I think he can. I think um, he can master the, like, sort of like, how best to describe um, Thor's comedy. It's sort of that, like, um, sarcastic and not really sarcastic, more like witty and all kind of like um, mm. just like he, he he's a guy who's like always like mm. like oh yeah I can take the challenge even he's like um, even though like I, the scene in Ragnarok when he like chucks the ball and like bounces back at him like um, you know I think one that's a lot of the writing that like the writers started like Taika Waititi to start recognizing that they could pull that from Hemsworth and also I think um, again Skarsgård is capable of um performing that comedy and performing that in a convincing like level where like nobody like like can't take like everyone takes it seriously and accepts it as a part of the character and again he can like with his physicality he can like kick as much ass kick as much ass as chris hemsworth did and that's my pick it's an interesting pick i think it's thank you, thank you, you you nailed thor as a character but i think you still made the wrong pick for thor mm. uh and the right pick is robert pattinson now you talk about charisma 
Robert Pattinson embodies charisma. Uh, if you've seen him in The Devil All the Time, you know he is the most charismatic person on screen. Uh, and if you want to talk about subtle, quiet moments like in Avengers Infinity, Infinity War, hit one of his Chris Hemsworth's best scene, mm-hmm. it's a very quiet moment with him and Rocket. And who would you bet, want to portray that more than you would Robert Pattinson with the subtleness that he can have as an actor? If you've seen The High Life, um, it's really not, there's very little dialogue. It's all emotion from physicality. And he carries himself with that physicality. There's a reason why he's Batman, because he has that physicality. And he can bring that to Thor, as well as the humor. Uh, he can be hilarious in roles. The devil all the time, he's like this weird, creepy dude. But he's also, I mean, deadly hilarious. If you've seen Tenet, uh, if you've been lucky enough to be able to see it, he is the star of the film. I mean, D- John David Washington's great, but he does... Pattinson brings the charisma that really pushes that film along and keeps you engaged in it. And that's what you need Thor to do. You need Thor to keep you engaged and entertained. And he can do all of that. Your first two, first two, three, three choices. I've, I've been writing, I've been keeping track. I've been writing them down. Your first three choices have been unexpected. This one, and maybe this is just because personally, I, Thor is not the Avenger I vibe most with. But this is also most certainly out of all the fan casting season, this is the choice I buy the absolute least with. I cannot buy this at all. all right. I'm sorry. Here's, I do not buy this. I'd rather, friend. for those who were watching, before we started filming, I was telling Henry that my friends had given me an alternate fan cast and that I would have bought that fan cast more than Robert Pattinson just because you know, Robert Pattinson excels at all the dark, like, the darker, more messed up roles. And quite frankly, they have not taken Thor in that direction. We got a hint of it in Infinity War, but we haven't from, and we saw a little of it in Endgame, but then they brought it back to the comedic aspect of Thor. Robert Pattinson, I'm not, like, I love Robert, Robert Pattinson. I have become like, such a huge fan of him. I agree that he is charismatic. I just don't think he is the char- the right type of person for the way they wrote Thor in the MCU. I don't, I just do not vibe with that. I 100% disagree. Uh, I think Taiko, (laughs) I think Taiko by TT would 100% love to have Robert Pattinson as Thor. No offense to Chris Hemsworth. I think Robert Pattinson would hate to be in like a style of like Thor Ragnarok. There's a reason he chose to be in Matt Reeves' Batman and not like in an MCU because. I I disagree. I think that's all about timing. That's not about casting. You're you're bringing uh, up a completely different uh, argument uh, here. Fair enough, fair enough. Anyway, so, we'll move on. We'll move on. Yeah, yeah, we'll move on. We'll move yeah. on uh, to arguably the most popular uh, character in the MCU, but I, I'd say the second Who's most. Your uh, first? Captain America. Mm. Uh, well, the, man, the man to your right, uh, yes. right in behind you. So who did you end up picking for him? What was your pick? Well, I figured the best option, if Chris Evans um, was not like, you know, Chris Evans was, was uh, on another parallel world where he wasn't on this earth. Well, one, this earth would be a sadder place without him. But I figured Chris Evans didn't exist here. The only reasonable option would be this, the, one of the runner-ups on the short list for Cap. And so, yeah, I know, I know. I, I, I was thought about it too, but I was like, you know what? Like, it would just, it works. It works. So I threw in Mr. Jim Halpert himself. I threw in John Krasinski. You, if you watch the Knives Out one, I threw him in there. Funny enough, replacing Chris Evans' other role as Ransom Drysdale, even though Captain America and um, Ransom Drysdale. Like seems like dude. a common theme here. I know, right? It's like crazy. And um, but he can play the good guy. He can play like the like like the reasonable, like charming kind of like I point to the scenes in like First Avenger and Chris Evans is like when he's like before he gets a super soldier scene and even in scenes where like um like at the party with like peggy carter like he can still that play that like like excuse me that all shucks like have that all shucks like good guy energy around him and we also know from films like uh 13 hours and uh jack ryan and even in a quiet place he can portray the he can portray the leader he can portray the emotional core he's the one like holding everyone together Excuse me, and um, he ha- he has the charm. He has the um, not even the physicality, although he does have that too. He just has the presence around him as both the like uh, down to earth, like 
reasonable guy and also as like the ultimate leader like you'd follow him into battle like like no matter what you believe like that scene in endgame when like thanos's armies pull up and caps there like broken shield like you buy that like he'd be the type of guy to still stand up there even though he's like all alone and that's kind of why uh john krasinski is my second pick for captain america wow all right that's not that's not bad not bad at all thank you thank now, you now i ended up going with jonah hill no i'm just kidding um, i was gonna was, say i was like whoa <laughs> that's crazy that would be a crazy pick um, yeah but that's a solid pick and I, I i understand your argument behind it a lot and i think i think there is some merit to it i think there's definitely some solid merit to it and i may be stalling right now for a certain yeah <laughs> uh john krasinski brings a lot with with what he's done and i think you bring some good points with um jack ryan right mm-hmm. but i i don't think he is quite what you need in that role you need someone who has like a little bit of a different filmography, I even feel. And I, I get John Krasinski can get big and all that stuff, but you know who else can? Guy who did a movie called Southpaw, Jake Gyllenhaal. Mr. Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal is awesome. And I think he could be awesome in this role. Physicality, he can nail it in a second. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want someone who can play a superhero, Look at him in the first half of the new Spider-Man movie as Mysterio. Mm-hmm. How well, even though you know he's going to turn villain, how well he, you can buy him as a hero mm-hmm. in this patriotic moment. And in this moment where he's killing, fake killing the last, spoilers, fake killing the last elementals. If you're watching this, you've seen the MCU. I mean, yeah. Otherwise, what are you doing with your time? You really feel for him in that moment. It's the way he delivers the dialogue. And I think he can have that weight to what he says in the same way that cap does um played by chris evans Mm -hmm. and jake gyllenhaal definitely has the filmography for this you can't there's no argument that he hasn't done that when you said that like uh the actor for cap needed a different filmography and like different from krasinski like what did you mean by like different i i just think he needed something that had that proved that he could be the star that feels like captain america okay and and I think that Jake Gyllenhaal has that. I think, I think John Krasinski could 100% pull it off, mm-hmm. but I just feel a little, little better about Jake Gyllenhaal in that role. Interesting, interesting. All right, so uh, that's that's coming off the Rob Pattis store. That, that's a that's a reasonable one. I can I can buy that. I can buy that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I almost went with to be honest, uh, someone else as that role, but. It was really tough uh, given the situation. Right, I can only imagine. <laughs> but let's move on to Iron Man, the most popular MCU character. Uh, maybe not my favorite necessarily. I'm a big, I'm a massive Captain America and Thor Thank fan. I, I love Iron Man too, but not the Iron Man two, the second movie. Yeah, <laughs> different story. But anyways, let's get into your choice for Iron Man. Oh. Uh, what is Tony Stark exactly? We see, he says it in the first Avengers movie, Genius Billionaire, Playboy, Philanthropist, and we see it throughout the, um, the rest of the MCU. He's sarcastic, he's outspoken, he can be overconfident, maybe even a little narcissistic at times. He is a, more than um, capable to, to be with women and women want to be with him. He has that, like, um, I suppose, like James Bond quality about him. And he is just a very constantly um charming in his own sarcastic like like overconfident way like confidence brimming left and right and uh hey funny like that i just used those exact key words to describe him those are the exact key words that describe a character who an actor excelled at playing and if you see his other work he is more than capable of matching our rdj's personality as iron man so I casted Mr. Jeff Winger from Community, Joel McHale, as Iron Man. Because if you've seen Community, you know he can be, and I'll read again, sarcastic, outspoken, overconfident, narcissistic, or eh, narcissistic. Um, first Iron Man is a bit narcissistic. And he is a man who who can also be like a very protective, a very um, guarded individual. He had a small bit in the DC show Stargo where he showed off his like natural, like heroic, like like he's like a genuine like friend to both sides and you see that with like Tony's relationship with um 
Happy Hogan with a um, War Machine, um, of, course, of course, Pepper. We know that, and um, Joel, Joel McHale can easily portray all those aspects of Tony to um, a near perfect degree, I believe. And I think he has the charm, he has the wit, he can be that like um, outspoken jackass that Tony can be at times. And he um, has that like guarded, like, like emotional side that like when he lets out it's very genuine it's very like um I've been, I've been saying this a lot but like down to earth and um you believe he that he's like you know he is still like a guy inside this dude like as a normal person with his own issues but still a normal person and i think joel McHale would make um probably the most out of everyone we've mentioned even probably to who you mentioned i don't know who you pick but like he's probably the actor with like whose name isn't out there as much as compared to everyone we've mentioned, but he, I think he can most certainly portray the role without a problem. It seems like you really did this as a defensive pick because you knew how much I am a fan of Community and Joe McHale in that show. But what you didn't know is that I don't care because I will say that that is not the right pick. I'd say he's almost a better pick for Cap just because of the physicality and the way he could put, he can play the positive pep talk side of him if you've watched Community. That's what he does every, at the end of every episode. He gives you that inspiring talk that makes you feel like, I'm ready to go, for, go to war. For but he this also guy. was, like, manipulating people. He got, like, Abed to, like, drive his car around. Like, and he, like, he's constantly... See, like, see but around. this is where you make the mistake. Tony Stark isn't a manipulative character. That's not who he is as a character. He's a flawed character, and he does a lot of things wrong. But manipulative is not part of that. Mm. But you know what is part of that? A lot of the stuff that you described that described Bradley Cooper in that role because that's who's right for it. Have you, you seen know the story? really funny? That was my backup. Hey. <laughs> no, it's but, between the two of them. That's hilarious. It's okay. You're allowed to make mistakes, and I'm here to make sure to, that right. I help you out. Uh, if you've seen A Star is Born, you know that Bradley Cooper can play the kind of lost soul that Tony Stark is in a way. Right. Uh, kind of lost in his way. And that, that sort of arc of trying to get redemption. And while in A Star is Born, you don't necessarily see him, you know, get to where he needs to be. It's a tragic film. Uh, you can see that struggle and the ability to portray that struggle on scene and have that ability to find, you know, he, Tony Stark finds the love of his life, Pepper Potts, right. and so does um, Bradley Cooper in like, A Star Is Born. Lady Gaga. Right. And then you need the comedic aspect. And if you need someone to do comedic aspect, get the guy from The Hangover. Or I American mean, Hustle. Or American Hustle, exactly. You're just making one. my point for me. Thank you. I mean, I like I said, he was my backup. So, like, in a way, like, who am I to argue? Like, I had Bradley Cooper as my backup, and I wanted to go with a more unorthodox pick. Yeah. And if you want someone who has physicality to him, I mean, you he's in American Sniper playing Chris Kyle. I mean, he had to gain a massive amount of weight for that. He had to learn how to use the physicality that Tony Stark uses because mannerisms are so important to that character. Right. Like the little twitches and the little reactions that he has to certain things are all extremely important. And I have so much faith that Bradley Cooper can hit that from both a comedy perspective and from a dramatic perspective. So that's why he's my pick as Iron Man. He's the best pick as Iron Man. Um, I will. Oh, uh, you go, you go. You yeah. It. Yeah. Uh, so I'll, what are your thoughts overall on my list? And then I'll give my thoughts on your list. All right. Bradley Cooper, give us your, Brad? give us your best, my, the fan Brad. casting you like the most and then the one you like the least. All right. Um, I'm just going to hit, uh, let's see, Bradley Cooper, um, as I was like, uh, like obviously showing, like he's he's my favorite pick. I um, I went with more unorthodox one, but like I said, he was my backup. I totally buy him as Iron Man. Um, yeah, like The Hangover is like a perfect like example of like Bradley Cooper acting in an Iron Man way. So that I vibe with. Jake Gyllenhaal, I don't know so much about, but I can like, oh, I'm all right with it because Jake Gyllenhaal is just such a versatile actor. Um, who else did we have? Everyone else, I didn't buy. I'll be honest. Like, I, it, it's a varying level of degrees. I've already made my point about Rob Pettis Hulk. I or Hulk as Thor. I just don't buy that. I think Matt Damon, as capable as he is, like I think Joseph Gordon Levitt can hit that much more quieter side of him uh, than Damon. Jennifer Lawrence. 
that's tricky because in a way she already portrayed a Black Widow type character in Red Sparrow, right? That was the right. same. Yeah, Red Sparrow. It's interesting that you that your 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 argument for her was that like she's like uh, uh, Natasha is a more like emotionally guarded like character type character, but I always like the roles I picture with Jennifer Lawrence. She's always the more like louder one for lack of a better word i think like in american hustle she's like always like like fighting with like amy adams and like christian bale i picture um like uh, hunger games where she you know takes her sister's place a very different role and i would say that'd be a little better example for black widow but i don't know i don't i don't um i don't know that might be after gyllenhaal i'd be okay with that just because uh jennifer lawrence is a relatively like capable actress to handle it Finally, Ryan Gosling as Hawkeye. I'd be okay with it if, you know, I didn't put up Richard Madden as Hawkeye. So, like, you know, I, 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 I have to believe Richard Madden is better than Ryan Gosling. I will say at the end of the day, Bradley Cooper was is my – I liked Bradley Cooper as Iron Man the best. And I like Rob Pat as Thor. I, this, I like that one the least. Yeah. My one pushback I'll give you on the Black Widow one mm-hmm. is that you can be a character – that is very loud and like talkative and very active in movies mm-hmm. as a character, but you can also be at your best in those small quiet moments. And I think Fair that's enough. what I'm talking about. Fair enough. Fair that enough. even though the cat actor actress is in like this movies where she's this very active, you know, she's doing everything. Um, a lot of, you know, there's some movies like Silver Linings Playbook where she's, it's like these big fight scenes of just like yell- going at each other with Bradley Cooper yelling at each other. Mm. Um, I didn't even mention that connection that they would have. I, I should have yes. blanked on that. But I think that would work really well. Um, but I, I respect your opinion, and I respectfully disagree. disagree. Yeah, well, um, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, so going through your picks, so you have Joe McHale as Iron Man. Mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm not very high on that one. Uh, sure. who, who did you John Krasinski as Captain America. I think that's your best pick. Okay. Uh, I suspect you you had uh, uh, him and I, I suspect you thought of him as well. Yes, I did think about him as well. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, I like that pick. Thank you. Then you have... Um, Skarsgård as Thor. Skarsgård as Thor, I'm not a fan of that pick. That that may be my least favorite. And then your Black Widow is... Vikander, at least you yeah. I'm not I'm not mad at it, but I'm not, I'm not too high on that pick. And then your um, Hawkeye it. is... Hmm? No, I was just saying Madden. I was just like, yeah, Madden. I, I feel like Madden in the role of Hawkeye is just wrong. I, I, I just, I, I love Madden as an actor. I right. just don't think that Richard Madden fits the character of Hawkeye in any way, shape, or form. So between Skarsgård or Madden, if you had to pick one, like if you had to pick one to keep. Ooh, 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 that's tough. Because yeah, uh, well, you bet you were like, I vibe with these two the least, but you can only pick one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one to, to save the world. Hmm. So here's my thing. Yeah, I would take out Richard Madden. Interesting. That's what I'm out. Interesting. Okay. That's very close though. I just don't think he fits that role. Fair like, enough. I, Fair Skarsgård enough. at least I can be like he could he he could, he could be capable in it, but I don't think he'd be great. I don't think it's you're putting him in a situation where he's set to set up to succeed. Fair enough. I can, I, I can, I can roll with those arguments. Yeah. Disagree, okay. but I can roll with those arguments. Yeah. At the end of the day, those are our picks. Please let us know what uh, your thoughts were. Did we pick, did we forget someone who was like really obvious for a role? Uh, did you like our picks? Was one of us completely off some crazy stuff? Uh, let us, <laughs> it's not me. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Anyways, let us know in the comment section down below. Uh, please go and like the video, subscribe. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. Peace out.